and welcome. I'm Joel Gazdar, the founder of Wild Food Cafe, and we have the wonderful Aisley Gazdar behind the camera today. And we're going to show you one of our favorite fruits, especially for this time of year the humble and magnificent pomegranate, which came out of ancient Persia and is now growing all around the world, different parts of Europe, Turkey, Spain. Um, very popular in California, grows really well there. We have some massive ones today. They happen to be Turkish. Um, they are a glorious fruit full of little red rubies. So there's various ways to get into the pomegranate. Um, we're going to explore some of the ways to release some of its treasures today rather easily. I'm sure many of you have experienced less than effective ways of getting the goodness out of a pomegranate. So we will show some of what we've learned today. So some of the things we like to do, we've got to bear in mind sometimes, depending on how long ago they've been picked, they get a little um, furry and sometimes moldy around the top end. So we can choose to chop off that top end. First, it's always good to either give your pomegranate a roll around and hear it. I don't know if you'll be able to get in close with the microphone and hear us breaking away and softening up and loosening the pomegranate seeds from the skin. So give it a little rock around, loosen every, everything up. Now, one of these huge pomegranates is more than enough for a few people, but we're going to make this as, as our lunch today. Now, Today we're not just juicing a pomegranate, we're blending a pomegranate. So this is like a pomegranate milk as well as a pomegranate juice. And of course, the milk aspect coming from the fact that by putting it in a powerful blender like a Vitamix and blending it really well, we're going to be releasing the creamy milkiness from the seeds within the kernel. Now these pomegranates, we have put them in the refrigerator to cool down. Now the reason we've done that is that we're going to blend them really well in the blender and in a really powerful blender that creates a bit of friction and heat and uh, we'd rather keep our pomegranate juice cool for both the deliciousness of the flavour that it is when it's cooler and as well as the fact that we want to preserve as much of the nutrients as possible that may otherwise be ruined by the heating. So another technique apart from rolling it round on a nice hard kitchen counter gentle spanking all the way around just to loosen everything up help the closely snuggled kernels come loose we don't want to hit it too hard we don't want to waste any of the precious juice and spill it everywhere we just want to loosen up some of the kernels so i'm going to slice off the top that sometimes can be a little bit moldy depending if you're in a country where pomegranates grow fresh. I'm doing my best to not cut into any of the kernels as we can see the beautiful grenade full of rubies is there. Now the pomegranate comes in sections it usually comes in about six sections you can see where the ridges are. So I like to cut just about two millimeters around the pomegranate on its axis. I might also cut off the end, which just makes it a bit easier because it's rather hard and dense. So we've got one there. So I'm just again cutting in one or two millimeters deep into the pomegranate so that I'm not spilling too much of the juices. Now occasionally you might come across a pomegranate where a section of it has gone a bit moldy inside. I'm going to cut around the equator as well. Again, just a couple of millimeters just to cut the rind. Now, it's probably best to do this over a bowl, depending on how accurate your cutting has been, just to not waste any of the kernels. So as we can see here, look at that, they're all beginning to come loose. So section by section, we should have about 12 sections, the six along one axis, and then we've cut it around the equator as well. So if we can just loosen these up, all the kernels begin to come loose and it's then you just follow with your finger or your thumb along the fault lines so to speak gently gently just caressing them and encouraging them to come loose 
effortlessly. Now, if this is not color therapy, I do not know what do not know what it is. So, if we're wondering about nutrition, what better nutrition than vibrancy, than color, than juiciness, and the electricity? These little pomegranates are like powerhouses, and each of these little cells, these little kernels, are membranes. They're each little batteries storing electromagnetic life force from Mother Earth, and we are going to make great use of them today in a smoothie. So, we're going to get zero waste from this pomegranate out of everything we can eat from it because we're going to be getting all the wonderful healthy oils and fats which are great for our brain, our nervous system, generally all of our tissues require some healthy fats and no better fats than fresh straight from the fruit. Packed, we don't really need to know that, that foods are packed with anything more than the wonderful word which is phytonutrients. And of course, phytonutrients meaning nothing more complex or simple than nutrients from plants. And if we eat a wide variety of plants and keep trying new things each day to get out of our comfort zone and engaging with this Garden of Eden planet with all its beautiful fruits, we will have all the nutrients we require. So just one meal at a time, and a little bit more experimental, having a little bit more fun. So I say, come and have a look at this bowl full of rubies that we have here. Okay, here we see we have two pomegranates worth of rubies. Look at this goodness. Oh. As you can see, we've taken out more or less all of the white bits of membrane or pith. There are denser bits, there are harder bits like this, and there's very thin papery bits like this. This is ac actually an excellent medicine, uh, antiparasitic, etc. It is extremely bitter, these little white bits of skin. So generally when, when eating it, we take them out, but you can leave a tiny little bit in, as you see, there are a few little bit white bits in there, and that's gonna add some medicinal quality when we blend it but it is very bitter, so we don't wanna to leave too much in there. So this recipe can be as simple as blending these pomegranate kernels, both the juice and the milkiness of the central seed. And that's a delicious smoothie on its own. We're gonna do a couple of simple little upgrades today. One, we're gonna add some of this wonderful liquid, which I say will show you here. This is simply spring water with a couple of tablespoons or a tablespoon of hibiscus, a red flower from the Caribbean. It's dried there, you can barely tell it's red color. But that, add that to a little water and we get the wonderful hibiscus tea. So this is added it's cold water. We're gonna add this in just to help it blend a little better and again, it's cold to uh, make sure things don't get overheated in the blender. Then one more thing we're gonna add, we're gonna make this the equivalent of a green smoothie without adding any greens, with the simple, wonderful addition of some seaweed. Now we've got some options. We could do that with a, with a white colored seaweed, like the Irish moss that we have here, which is essentially the leaves of the ocean. So it's adding all those wonderful vegetable leaf qualities from a green smoothie without being green. It's also gonna thicken it up wonderfully. Uh, so we could either add a white seaweed like that to not ruin the color, or we could add a red seaweed, such as dust, which you can see here, a lovely red seaweed. And we like the colors to match. So we're gonna blend this up now and uh, add more tea as is required. Thick smoothie, I'm going to add a little bit more of the, uh, of the rest of the hibiscus tea. And that's good to go. Depending on the sweetness of your pomegranates, some tend to be uh, a lot sweeter than others that tend to be more sour and astringent, astringent. Then we might want to add a little sweetener. That can be anything from a few drops of liquid stevia, 
to some honey, to some maple syrup, whatever you like, or even some more dried fruit, like some uh, goji berries, something else red. Okay, so here we have it. Check out this color. This isn't just pomegranate juice. This is pink pomegranate milk. A little hint of hibiscus, if you feel like adding it. It's not 100% necessary. Of course, you can add some wonderful red or white seaweed in there for all those wonderful trace minerals. And to give it more of that mineral rich smoothie edge. So I know I say would simply not be able to enjoy this smoothie without a prerequisite straw. So here we go. Prince of Persia's pink pomegranate delight. Okay, so pomegranates. Little treasure chests full of rubies. Do we think this is going to nourish us with divine nutrition? Pomegranates, one of the uh, few fruits to be mentioned in many of the ancient texts. Pomegranates bursting with antioxidants. If you want to have the best pomegranate juice in existence, make your own and don't just settle for pomegranate juice. Have pink pomegranate milk smoothie with all the goodness of the season there, all the good oils, all the good fats to help you feel invincible. This inevitably will nourish every little bit of you which would love to be nourished. There's much folklore about the medicinal benefits of pomegranate for the breasts, for the ovaries, for the testicles, for the lungs, for the bones. Feel free to look up whatever scientific studies you like on the Google. Otherwise, trust your intuition, listen to your inner nutritionist, listen to your body, trust your taste buds, and trust Mother Nature's bountiful deliciousness. Thank you, so we look forward to hearing about your pomegranate smoothie combinations. Let us know what recipes you would love for us to either have at the cafe or to make on the show, and we look forward to seeing you on the next exciting show.